Everything they're working on is terrible and is not very good. Funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female, um, of female superheroes in that X-Men group, so I think it's outdated. I wasn't super into superhero comics when I was a kid. I read a lot of like indie press stuff. So what I love about being a part of this universe is the diversity and the inclusion. When you do Black Panther, you have a black director, black producer, you have a black designer, you have a black choreographer, you have a black, and I'm like, that's more racist hmm. than anything else. NerdErotic.com. Disney Marvel's Kevin Feige doesn't think audiences will ever get tired of superhero movies from Variety, but quite frankly, I like the direct's headline a lot better. Marvel boss Kevin Feige responds to superhero fatigue concerns. Superhero fatigue is something that's been talked about for a couple of decades, but we're here to talk about MCU fatigue. Disney Marvel boss Kevin Feige was recently on a podcast getting softball questions where he vaguely addressed the concerns with the diminishing returns from Disney Marvel as a whole and the MCU, and then he immediately dismisses them. Or does he? We'll get to that in just a moment. To say superhero media is popular would be an understatement for those looking to get their fill of heroes. There's plenty of opportunity to do so. After all, 2022 alone saw over a dozen live action superhero stories hit both the big screens and televisions worldwide, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. And they aren't kidding, the following was released last year. From Amazon, The Boys, The Samaritan. From DC, The Batman, Black Adam, Superman and Lois, Naomi, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman, Peacemaker, The Flash, Stargirl, Titans, Doom Patrol, The Sandman, Pennyworth. From Sony Marvel, Morbius. From Disney Marvel, Two Specials, Werewolf by Night and the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Crap. Thor Love and Thunder. Crap. Doctor Strange Mom. Mega crap. Moon Knight, She-Hulk, and Miss Marvel. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. Can't imagine why this subject is coming up at all after all that. But as I said, this isn't necessarily superhero fatigue as much as it's bad movie and MCU fatigue. Again, this is an interview with his old USC film instructor who hosts the Movie Biz podcast, Secrets of Marvel Studios, with Kevin Feige. No, I'm not anticipating any hard-hitting questions, but let's hear from the man himself after a year of MCU failures and the CEO of his parent company getting fired in the middle of the night on a Sunday at an Elton John concert. This never gets old. When asked what are the secrets of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige has this to say. There are no secrets. The secret is, there are secrets in terms of the storylines and spoilers and things like that. But the, if there was a formula, because people have been asking us for a very long time, what's the formula? And the truth is there isn't any. Bullshit. I think a better question is, do you have a plan? And the answer is clearly no, but they most definitely have a formula. A number of years ago, you know, when we became part of the Walt Disney Company, one of the many, many positive things that happened uh, then is that we got access to all of the brilliant people at the other studios uh, within uh, Walt Disney Live Action and Pixar and soon after Lucasfilm. So we could have these inside conversations with people. And I found it very therapeutic when the folks at Pixar, again, this is probably a decade ago, were sharing with us how hard they have to work on each project and how at a certain point, everything they're working on is terrible. 
and is not very good and needs to be needs to be shaped and worked and reworked. And I felt such a such a weight lifted off my shoulders because that is what it was like for us and still is like for us at Marvel Studios. Well, I couldn't agree more with Kevin Feige there. To be fair, Kevin Feige says this is all part of the process and things work themselves out in the end. I wouldn't agree with that, but I can't help but think this is a reference to the VFX problems they've had. It's one thing to do some pickups and reshoots here and there, and it's another thing to reshoot a beginning, an ending, or an entire film. Considering they've reshot every single film and almost every single D-plus series in Phase 4. Marvel reportedly changed Black Widow's ending fight during reshoots. Shang-Chi reshoots reportedly beginning in LA next week. Eternals director says reshoots are a blessing. Disney Marvel reportedly refilmed most of Doctor Strange 2. Thor Love and Thunder undergoing reshoots with Christian Bale. Oh, good for you! Black Panther Wakanda Forever reportedly undergoing more reshoots going to have to start putting nets outside the windows of these VFX facilities. And to all the shills who say all of these reshoot rumors are from alt-right ists and phobes. And for some reason, I just thought, well, all these other successful places and people, it must just come out of their brains perfectly formed. And it's only us at Marvel Studios that has to grind and work and rework and rewrite and recut and reshoot over and over again to make something something work that may corroborate this in a new report from vulture disney marvel is singled out for the studio's lack of organization in collaborating with vfx houses for slates of cinematic releases and d plus shows according to an anonymous animator who worked on the past marvel cinematic universe projects one frequent issue that aggravates contractors is marvel's request to alter endings rather than stick to what they initially agreed upon in pre-production the animator explained, it's kind of like putting that last coat of paint on a car, and while you're putting that last coat on, you're trying to decide what color you want. They don't figure stuff out early enough. Listen, I don't want to make it sound like these third-party VFX organizations that work for Disney are grabbing their lunch pail, putting on their hard hat, and going to the coal mine. They're dealing with pixels. Still, credit where credit is due. These guys are trying to polish an identity politics and intersectional feminism turd under unrealistic deadlines that Disney Marvel has all the power over. Are there specific lessons learned? I think I think on every project we work on, we learn lessons. Have you, though? Really? You know, we, we yeah, it's incredible to say that, but Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, which is our next feature that comes out uh, in February, will be our 31st film. We've now completed over 10 series for Disney+. Plus, Which were all varying degrees of pretty bad to awful. And the fun thing about starting to do ongoing narrative uh, long-form uh, series was it was a whole new learning curve. Would you mean, for example, learning how to make something like a television show and one that's coherent, that doesn't assassinate your legacy characters? But I do think, you know, and I'm sure an example will come to me. I have an entire playlist of examples right here. But I do think that on every project one works on, you need to take your lessons. And we do a post-mortem on every project, or at least we try to if we're not too busy with the next project. Maybe they've just been too busy lately. To sit and discuss what went right and what went wrong. And I remember we started doing that. We were asked to do it for the first time after Iron Man 1. And we call them postmortems now. At the time, it was a what went wrong meeting. But it actually is great to sit and go, here's what was done. Here's how we could have done it better. And we do that on we do that on every on every project. I have a suggestion. Maybe you need to do a what went wrong meeting with your what went wrong meetings. Of what what lessons is uh, learned is entertain the audience at every turn. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. What about the message? Entertain first. You can have as many beautiful messages and beautiful life theories and beautiful thematics uh, uh, that you want to put into the world that all of us do and all of our filmmakers do. But if you're not entertaining first, they, it will fall on deaf ears. Is it your time of the month? I don't get my period dip. Shit. I don't have a uterus. Or over it. Now, this is one of the quotes that a lot of people are keying in on for good reason. And hey, it sounds great. Except there are two ways you could look at it. That Disney Marvel is indeed going to focus on entertainment over identity politics and intersectional feminism. Or they think they're doing that already. We've heard this kind of crap from Disney executives in the past and words are wind. Change is indeed coming. But as I've said before, when it does come, 
Disney and its subsidiaries will be the very last to the party if they show up at all. Now, how do you decide on the next phase? Each of our sagas are broken into phases, and we now find ourselves uh, on the precipice of phase two of uh, the multiverse saga. Okay, I hope you got that straight. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, which is going to start phase five, which was supposed to be in phase four, is also going to be phase two of the multiverse saga. I'm so confused. People are asking, well, how long is this going to last? What, what is this fad of comic book movies going to end? This is the other quote people are keying in on, and this is where Kevin Feige addresses the superhero fatigue and the bullshit starts. And I didn't even really understand the question, because to me it was akin to saying, to saying after Gone with the Wind, well, how many more movies can, can, can be made off of novels? There was a time prior to Captain Marvel, I would agree with that very poor analogy. Allow me to make one of my own using Gone with the Wind. Disney Marvel's current process of making films based on their comic books is akin to making Gone with the Wind for a modern audience. Pedro Pascal would play Rhett Butler, Elliot Page would play Scarlett O'Hara, and their roles would be reversed, and RuPaul would play Mammy. Do you think the audience will sour on movies being adapted from books? they are 80 years of the most interesting, emotional, groundbreaking stories. 80 years of stories that have sold millions of comics that you have mostly skipped to get to stories that have sold in the thousands. Have been told in the Marvel comic. Uh, and it is our great privilege to be able to, to take what we want and adapt them. Take what we want and adapt them. Basically, Marvel in name only, although I need to stop dead naming Marvel because it no longer exists. It died in 2009. It's only Disney Marvel now. And they were doing so well, but it all started with Nick Fury losing his eye to a kitty cat and turning Marvel into a net bending, which means you can adapt one of the greatest stories in the history of Marvel Comics the death of Captain Marvel. But another way to do that is adapting them into different genres. Again, something that sounds good in theory, and quite frankly, they were on their way to doing it in the beginning, but that's not what's really happening now, is it? Thanks to the MCU Stage 4, everything's been homogenized down into formulaic generic superhero person. <laughs> That looks like something out of Sky High, but not nearly as good. We can tell any types of movies that are are merely uh, share one thing, two things. The Marvel Studios logo above the title and a seed of an idea from our publishing uh, uh, history. As I said, they're not adapting anything. It's just simply a seed of an idea. And that's how we get things like unrecognizable Namor, a gender swap taskmaster who was actually played by a dude, an insufferable Captain Marvel played by an insufferable actress, Brie Larson, who got demoted in her own sequel, by the way. A joke of a Moon Knight, a beige color palette gobbledygook Eternals film that should have been a love letter to Jack Kirby, an underperforming generic Shang-Chi film starring a stock photo model that should have been rated R and an homage to Bruce Lee, introducing Miss Marvel, America Chavez, Ironheart, Echo, and Kate Bishop before Doctor Doom, the Silver Surfer, and the Fantastic Four. By the way, where is the casting for that film? And I think they're on their Fantastic Fourth director. After doing the impossible and making Captain America and Iron Man household names, you kill them off, bringing back Daredevil only to have them take the walk of shame. But I'm sure those CW writers are going to turn things around. Kevin Feige achieving his goal of having more female characters than male creating the MCU, destroying all the legacy characters to make way for all of the diversity and inclusivity, making the exact same mistakes as the comics and getting the same results. I don't make the rules. Bruce Banner is Hulk. Tony Stark is Iron Man. Steve Rogers is Captain America. Thor is Thor. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Speaking of the publishing wing and your source material, how are those comic books doing since Kevin Feige took over? It appears that the entire industry has fallen apart. The comic shops that are left can no longer rely on comic book sales to stay in business. The sales have cratered so much they've stopped reporting them. Looks like Comixology is dead and manga is laughing. Maybe the video games are doing better. Ooh, it looks like the Avengers got canceled and along with the Guardians of the Galaxy, it ended up costing Square Enix $200 million. Not to be outdone, D Plus lost a billion and a half dollars in streaming in a single quarter on Kevin Feige's watch and Bob Chapix, but he got fired in the middle of the night on a Sunday. I'm gonna do this all day.
that's okay because here comes China to the rescue. Disney Marvel's gonna get those adult pretenders in line and hell, maybe they'll have another opportunity for their parent company to thank a concentration camp. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's totally fine for the adult pretenders to continue attacking the fans slash paying customers, but don't say anything bad about the CCP. Just a reminder, Disney covered Chadwick Boseman's face on a poster for China that had Kevin Feige's name on it. If Kevin Feige would have moved on or retired after Endgame, he would have gone down as a legend. They would have renamed streets after him across America and they would have renamed Hollywood Feige Wood. But it looks like we have to break out that Dark Knight clip again. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Superhero films could have gone on for decades as long as they focused on the one thing that made them popular, their characters. Instead, they decided to lean into identity politics, which will put an expiration date on everything. But don't worry, Kevin Feige will be just fine as he continues to spam Disney Marvel content that doesn't adapt or even honor the source material. It comes at the expense of it. What did it cost? Everything. Nerdorotic.com